all I need is a sash Hey everyone, my name is Mina. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm very excited to do a video to recap my experience in the Master of Financial Training program in UCLA because I know it could be pretty nerve-wracking to make a huge decision going to grad school or choosing a program like this one. So I just want to put my experience out there as honest as possible and hope it would help you guys to make your decision. Today I am at Anderson School of Management here at UCLA. So the reason I'm here because I just completed my Master in Financial Engineering program last December, so a little over a month now. I want to give a recap of my experience in the academic side, recruitment journey, career office support, that kind of stuff. So I finished my undergrad in Financial Mathematics and I go straight into my Master program here. So over the 15 months, I did 15 courses and I completed one six-month capstone project with an insurance company's asset management arm. I also completed two internships, one full-time internship, one part-time internship. The full-time one is with Amazon Web Services, the part-time one with AIG's trading team. And so I would say my experience is pretty unique to myself. I'm not looking to cover everyone's experience and everyone's experience could be different, but I do hope that if you are interested in grad school or more specifically financial engineering this video is going to give you an idea of what is it like day to day how does my whole experience like and yeah right so the first thing what is mfe so mfe is short for master of financial engineering and that is what i'm gonna refer to whenever i say mfe so mfe is a professional program that would help people who are interested in quantitative finance um, there's many sides to quantity finance, but who are interested in the whole field in general to help you prepare and go into the industry. So for that reason, a lot of people who come into the program, um, not because they want to pursue PhD, but because they want to go into the industry after they graduate. Now, when you're looking at a school, I would recommend looking at the faculty that provide the program. So for me, I chose a business school like Anderson in UCLA because I know I have done a lot of theoretical study in financial mathematics during undergrad and I want something that's just more practical and hands-on that would connect me to the industry. So I think business school would be a perfect jumping point for me. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about the theories and why why we doing a certain way when we do those modeling stuff. Thinking about a program that is provided by joint faculty like science, operation research, with engineer or engineering, with business school would not be a bad idea. In fact, it could be a great idea too. I know a few schools offer that. I think Columbia is one of them. They do joint program from business school with their IEOR, operation research. Do not quote me on that. But yes, that's why I choose business school for my MFE program. So our program size is around 70 or so people. And I would say maybe 30% is female, 70% is male. And we come from a diverse background. People going from biomedical, actual science, me coming from financial mathematics, chem and chemical engineering, um, electric engineering. Um, what I also find is that UCLA MFE alumni are very nice people. During my own internship search, when I was interviewing, I always search up a previous a few years alum if they have been interning at the same company. And when I reach out to them, they always offer to help, whether it's replying to my message or even give me a phone call. So next up, the career, recruiting, jobs, whatever you want to call it. The very important part of every professional master program out there. I come into MFE because I want to be in quantum finance when I joined. And now that I finished the program, I realized that is such a blanket statement. Like data science, quantitative finance represents a lot of things. It's on a spectrum. You could be data analyst, model validation analyst, risk analyst, quant strategist in a bank, quant strategist in a hedge fund, to even quant developer. It completely depends on your background before the master program and also your interest. 
I would recommend digging a little bit deeper and understanding which role on the spectrum you're the most interested in that will really help you narrow your focus during your recruitment. So among all the job titles that I just mentioned, there will be roles that are more technical, there will be roles that are less technical, and there will be job that's closer to the capital market. Okay, but there will be also role that is more a traditional finance pivoting toward consulting, like valuation. So think about it. So think about how technical do you want to be and also how close to the capital market do you want your future career to be? Because I come in thinking that all MFE students want to be quant research or want to be in quant strategy, building trading strategy, communicating with trader, close to the market, being in the center of the market. So that was my mentality coming in. And as you know, I think that people who eventually go into these two roles, they're actually genuinely interested in the market. They're adapt, they're able to read research paper, they're able to program the research paper, validate their research paper, and add on their own ideas. They follow the market closely. They're just passionate about that object. And not everyone's gonna be in these two roles. Look out for a different career path that is most suitable for you. And personally, I am going to Amazon to be a business operation analyst um, as a full time after my internship. And I know our MFE alumni and my classmate has gone on to quite a few roles that is outside of quant research and quant strategies. And I'm gonna provide a list of titles, but they're not comprehensive. Some of us have gone on to become data analysts, complex securities valuation analysts, investment bankers, financial analysts, and quant researcher, as I said, strategists, data scientists. Also, these roles are not just limited in big banks. We could go into the big four, accounting firm, consulting, high tech firm, or you could go into research consultancy, some fintech such as um, SoFi. I think it's a payment tech firm. What I'm getting at is the roles is on a spectrum. And also the industry that you're in doesn't have to be just bank or asset management or hedge funds, although those are the popular ones. So the best way to learn more about um, how the program's placement is doing is to one, go on the program's website, and second, go on LinkedIn, type in UCLA MFE, and see where our alums are at today. When thinking about grad school, I always prefer one with internship program because there will be more career support built into the program. I would say that for my program at UCLA, I have received great support. And here's what I received. I have networking session, I have two quantitative interview prep session, I also have a specialized recruitment program that's directly to the UCLA program and I also have weekly job posting online. When I go to those um, networking sessions, not every company that I want them to be here will be here. But at the same time, their company that I didn't even know before will be there. So we have got Ernest & Young, Morgan Stanley, AIG, and a few more to come to our networking session and do like a one-on-one -on -one information session. And I would say job posting that the career office sent are hit or misses. Overall, I would try to use as many resources as possible from the career office and take the lead in my own internship and full-time search. And I want to say that having career support office does not equal to an internship or a full-time offer. But what it does is that it helps us to get attention from company when they come on campus to recruit or having info session because you're in the program and there's someone reaching out to those companies for the students. Now personally, I go to the info session and one of my internship, the AIG internship in trading team, come from the connection in those networking session. My other internship come from me applying online and getting return offer. And even if we couldn't find an internship, the program offers project during the summer so a company can come in pitch their ideas and students will select those and work with the company supervisor to work on a project if you don't have a summer internship. I know quite a few of our classmates did that. So before COVID, I would come to Anderson, maybe take the bus around 7 and I would get here by 8.30 because that's usually our first start starts at 8.30. For two or one days during the week, we will have no lecture 
and we would probably have two to three classes a day. Each class lasts three hours, so we will get a 10 minute break in between. And once we finish the classes, assignments, homework comes along the way. And I usually do it with my group, maybe do it in the library probably for a few hours more. By six o'clock, I would pack my stuff, try to go home and do some more work at night all the way maybe until 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock. So courses. Going through the program, I got a clear idea of what type of financial products are out there, how to price them, how to put them in the portfolio, trade them, hedge the risk. And my program, I would say, didn't focus a lot on math and statistical theories, but it really helped me to hands out the procedure of how to do things. For example, by now I've done many times of replicating a trading strategy, portfolio sorting, decile sorting, that kind of stuff, many times. I also coded in many ways how to price a derivative, a binomial tree, trinomial tree, Euler's method, stochastic equation, numerically, all that kind of stuff. So the common courses between different MFE program are usually investment theories, introduction to econometrics, introduction to stochastic calculus, machine learning, fixed income, house credit market, computational finance, a lot of programming, quantitative asset management, physical arbitrage. Although I wish I learned a little bit more of why I'm doing it or the pros and cons. Yes, so for some of you who was watching this video, you might also come from financial mathematics backgrounds like me. So when I compare my financial mathematics undergrad and UCLA, I feel that my knowledge is more firm compared to my master program because my, I have four years to learn those material, to practice in homework again and again, versus for my master program, I only have 15 months. So keep that in mind. So overall, you may find the courses too easy or too hard, depends on your own background and your expectation. But I really appreciate that it just gave me a good sense of what people are talking about in the industry. Factor investing, factor rotation, timing, technical indicator, that kind of stuff. So in general, I do feel more confident going through the program to whichever industry I go in, whether it is in finance or in tech. So why I study for my MFE in UCLA? Before I go into that, I know that people study for different reasons. And during orientation, we have a session that goes around the circle, people talking about why they study it and what kind of opportunity costs they're giving up. Some of them are switching career, some of them are pausing a really good upgoing trend career to enhance their knowledge. Some of them might be doing it away from home. So their partner could be in a different country or they're reallocating. There's two reasons for me. One, I really want to come to the United States to see what opportunities are out here. I know compared to Canada, the States at this moment, um, for me, have more opportunity in banking, in tech, in consulting. So I'm just a curious soul and I want to see it all. So that's my first reason. My second reason is that I have studied financial math for four years and the topics that I've seen are interesting to me. But at the same time, I don't feel like I know enough of practical knowledge to carry it forward. So I want a crash course to take me from theories to application. So these are my two big reasons. But for me, I was choosing between a few programs. I was choosing between financial engineering, financial risk management. At one point, I was considering business analytics and data science related graduate school program. My biggest concern when I decided to choose financial engineering is that I'm not able to do anything related to data science or business analytics. But God, I was so wrong. Look at where I am now. My internship is in business analytics and my full time is also related to that operation business analytics field. So what I would say is that if you choose financial engineering because you want to quant finance, you're at the right place. But if you are hesitating because you don't know, would it, go, would it enable you to go out of direction? I would say don't hesitate. There are some courses here and in other MFA programs in other universities too, I believe, that are related to more like data science view. Um, speaking of that, the time, the amount of dollar, the amount of money you invest in grad school also should be your in your consideration. In my case, I gave up a full-time offer in consulting to do grad school. 
but I currently have no regrets. No regrets. So to other people, these reasons might not be sufficient or the opportunity cost would be too big. But for me, they are more than sufficient. So yes, find your reason. Your reason will push, push through all the hard times when you're doing graduate school. Now this is more general. The life in Los Angeles. As someone who come from the very cold, cold, cold weather city like Toronto, I really enjoy Southern California, Los Angeles in general. I know the city could seem very Hollywood-like or very social media influence, too glittery. But because I am in a different field, I'm in the tech or finance side of the city. So all those things could be actually very interesting to me as an outsider. So I actually don't mind it and I really like what California has to offer in terms of the national parks, the beaches. So yeah, I would say I make a few friends during my time in Los Angeles, even during quarantine before COVID hit. I haven't done a sit down talking video like this before. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I will try my best to answer. And I will be uploading more career focused content in my next few videos. So um, subscribe and stay connected. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you guys next time. Bye.